Okay, guys. Um, this is a very simple um, overview of what a between versus within design is. So, getting right into it, a between design is where you've got uh, two or more groups, and each group's allocated to a unique study condition. A within groups design is where you've basically got the uh, same group who are tested over multiple study conditions. I'll explain what a, a, a study condition is in a minute. Um, but before I do, just, just be aware of these definitions and also be aware different terminology is sometimes used. So a between groups design is also referred to as independent measures. That's two or more groups, one for each unique study condition. A repeated measures is the same as within study design and that's uh, where you've got a same group who uh, are allocated to all um, of the uh, conditions. Um, so here's a very simple um, study with two uh, conditions. Uh, the research question that we're asking is does caffeine improve memory? Uh, the hypothesis is that the caffeine will somehow boost memory and therefore the uh, memory test scores will be higher for those allocated to the caffeine condition as opposed to the non-caffeine, the water condition. So in a between groups design example, you've got two separate groups and one group are allocated to the uh, caffeine coffee condition and the other group are allocated to the water condition. Um, in a within groups design, um, there's the same group of people who are allocated to the caffeine condition first and then maybe a week later they're allocated to the water condition. So there are advantages of and disadvantages of both between and within groups design. Um, the advantage of the between groups design is that it prevents learning effects. Um, so within the within groups design, um, those attending the um, coffee condition, the caffeine condition, might have learned something about that. They might have learned something about the memory task, uh, which they then apply uh, to the second study condition a week later and that might improve the results so it might make the results worse they might um, be familiar with the memory task which um, uh, biases the results with improved memory scores or they might just simply be bored of the task and that produces worse scores so we try to reduce these biases uh, and there's no perfect design but it's important to be aware of these these limitations. So the, the disadvantages of the between groups design is that all of a sudden you've got individual differences. If you've got two separate groups, um, there's going to be different individual difference. Perhaps the study results are because one group just naturally has a, a better overall memory scores than the other group. Perhaps they just have better memories. We know that individuals have um, some individuals have better memories than others. So that's, a, that's the problem when you, when you have a between groups design. Um, and this bias, by the way, is called a confound. A confound is something that, we, that, that can bias or cause the, the findings which you do not intend. Um, as scientists, we like to factor out confounds. We like highly controlled studies. We don't like um, third party variables uh, biasing the outcomes of our study. Um, but unfortunately, even in highly controlled environments, it's very, very difficult to factor out all potential confounds. Um, so, as I've just mentioned, um, group number one might have just had better memories, you know, just naturally better memories, and were uh, by chance allocated to the uh, caffeine condition, and group two might have had worse memories than group one. Um, on average uh, and allocated to the water condition. So the results might be due to the fact that, just, that group one just had a, a better overall average memory than group number two and nothing to do with the fact that it was caffeine or non-caffeine. Um, in this particular example, we've got um, 
three conditions. I really need, need to get uh, through to you what a confound is, so I'm going to give another example. Um, in this particular experiment, we've got three plants and we're going to use three uh, separate fertilizers. So um, the idea is that uh, the hypothesis is that uh, um, in the third condition, study condition, plant number three will have the best fertilizer, plant number two will have the second best fertilizer, and plant number one will have the worst fertilizer. So um, our independent measure here is the um, thing we're manipulating, that's the different fertilizers, and the outcome variable is the size of the plant um, after a three week period. So our hypothesis in this particular situation is that plant number three will grow the most after receiving the best fertilizer and that will lead to the um, positive effects in, in growth. After three weeks, this is what the scientist finds. He finds that uh, plant number one is growing the, the, the least. Plant number two is actually growing quite substantially. Plant number three is growing the most. Our scientist is jumping with joy as the study has turned out as predicted. Um, but an, a, a, a third party comes along and says, actually, um, the, th the, the study might be biased due to the fact that plant three is closest to the window. Plant two is also close to the window. So the proximity to the window might have led to the additional growth and not the fertilizer. Hence, this is a confound. Plants two and three um, received greater light and therefore went through greater levels of photosynthesis and that might have led to the, incre the additional increase in growth. Our scientist all of a sudden after being told that by his colleague is very, very sad. He might have to restart the study and block off the window or add to his ever increasing limitation section of his science paper. Um, so this is the issue with confounds. It can ruin your study and we just have to be aware that when you're using things like repeated or between designs that can impact the study either through a learning effect as with this particular situation it, with a within design or independent uh, individual differences uh, with a between groups design. So um, the advantage of using a within groups design is it factoring out these individual characteristics like natural differences in memory because you're using the same group. So this is the advantage of using this. So the advantage of using a between groups design is basically the opposite of the advantages of using a within groups design. Their, their pros and cons are basically um, the opposite of the other. So the within groups design has the advantage that you're removing individual differences, but you're introducing an order, a learning effect. Whereas the between groups design is, um, it has uh, different groups. So there's no learning effect all of a sudden because each group is allocated to an individual condition, but there are uh, now all of a sudden uh, individual differences between groups. Uh, we do try to um, introduce things like counterbalances to mitigate some of these uh, biases where, for instance, the same group would, uh, uh, half of them would, would be allocated to the caffeine condition, the other half to the water condition, and perhaps the other half would um, be allocated to the water condition and then the uh, caffeine condition. So the order is counterbalanced. And you do that through some kind of randomization tool where you split um, basically the um, the order uh, half half the group of this particular group that you can see there would um, do the, the coffee followed by the water and the other half of the same group uh, would do the water followed by the coffee in the opposite order. So anyway, that's a very, very quick um, demonstration in terms of what a between and within groups design um, are. Uh, it's important when we get to the, the uh, data analysis, the SPSS uh, statistics package, um, as it will, how you enter data will be determined by what kind of group design you're using. 
Um, there's a bunch of things that I need to go through in terms of like nominal data, interval level data, or uh, ordinal uh, data, ratio based data. I'll do all of that in the SPS sessions. Uh, this was just a very, very brief overview of what between groups design is and what uh, within groups design is. Um, okay, guys, anyway, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed that. And I shall see you guys soon. Thank you very much.